Good morning chaps, we're back in the brewery today and whilst we have elements to go into the tanks we have no means of controlling them so what chance you're a booker every time he's going to fetch the ball look what are you doing with that ball lad what are you doing with that ball <laughs> look at his face what are you doing with that ball anyway as i was saying we've got no means of controlling it so what i have done is i've been in the back of the shed and i've dug out the old control kit that i built way back in 2014 check it out so when we started building the new kit at ivb this one was decommissioned and i took loads of pieces from it to make the new control panel which now has gone but this one uh, no longer working anymore was put into my shed effectively and the plan was to use it at home and build a home brew control panel uh, for the back garden but I'm of the opinion now that I'm going to be doing very little home brewing now we've got this kit here so uh, and I've, al I've already got a control panel of sorts at home haven't I so we'll reinvigorate we'll put some new life into this old banged up control panel so one of the first things that we're going to have to do today is well strip out its guts so all of this loose cables everywhere look none of it works it's all pretty much knackered a couple of these electronics have actually blown up and uh, well totally totally needs a full refurb but the good thing is it has the three phase elements mounted onto a heat sink not elements solid state relays already mounted onto a heat sink up at the top so I'm going to pull the guts out of this because it's got a lot of 24 volt 240 volt controls in there which I don't really need uh, and then we'll see how we go we'll start to rewire again but yes an old friend well I'm taking some bits and bobs out of here and uh, well shall we just say I've come a long way in terms of electrics since putting this little beauty together wow I'm surprised I didn't get a shock off of this all these years ago but uh, well we'll put her right we'll put her right and we'll redress it I can see a lot of unnecessary cabling a lot of cross wires here a lot of shared neutrals a lot of shared live feeds I brought an independent live feed in uh, to power the panel when really I could have just tapped off one of the phases it's crazy isn't it how I, uh, how I figured it out since then but yeah we'll continue stripping we'll take as much of this out as possible because I think it's probably safer if we redo everything so effectively we've just got a project box and a load of components that we need to stick together because uh, well this was potentially life threatening well it's 10 o'clock just gone and we've managed to strip the guts out of her so what we've managed to salvage is the two solid state relays up at the top a couple of PIDs a timer all the switching mechanism on the front I've got to replace a PID here for the boil but what we'll probably do is use that one for the boil that one for the HLT and this just as a mash temperature readout these don't work down here the volt and amp meters this on and off switch this timer still ticking away it's pretty nifty that isn't it I think all the lights work but we'll test them we've got an alarm timer here so for mashing for 60 minutes we can set that I don't know if I'm going to utilize it we've got a 12 volt power supply DC and then over here this looks like I ripped the robot's heart out doesn't it look all the veins hanging off of it but this was the main contactor for the supply it was 80 amps it was switching 
63 amps load on single phase previously. Don't think that's needed anymore. Got a couple of uh, 16 amp three phase sockets, a single phase 13 amp socket, a 32 amp plug on the floor, and that's about it. So I'm going to now start the long process of putting this back together. One thing I do notice is that I'm not going to need all these bus bar rails because we'll wire the feed for the three phase straight into the relays. I also need to mount another relay for the HLT, we'll use these two for the boil. And if I do have a bus bar like this, well I'm not going to mount it directly to the back plate, it should be stood off on some type of insulation. So I'll make a kind of black, uh, black, a kind of plastic uh, insulator to go between this and anything else. Because there is a chance that these screws, not the best way to mount it, could have actually shorted out on the terminals inside, so I shouldn't have done that. So that's probably something, particularly if it's screwed into this. If it's just uh, screwed into an insulator, that's not going to be too much of a problem because we've we've bridged all of these terminals anyway, so it's one big, basically one big, uh, one big block of power or whatever. But that could ground the live, for instance, onto the back plate, which is not something that we want or something that is safe. So we'll revisit all this. I'm gonna tip it upside down, strip it out, give it a clean, and then we'll start to dress it again. We are starting to get this thing back together, but wow, is it taking a lot of time. I forgot how much time it takes to wire up a control panel like this. So we got an extra heat sink on the side here, look, for the uh, HLT SSR. One of the other relays, one of these terminals came off and I couldn't fix it. So that's had to go in the bin. Then I've put in another PID to control the HLT and then we've also got one here that's just going to read out the mash temps. But wow, it's going to take us ages to do this. I think Stu's arrived, he's doing some painting, yeah he's up there. So that's going to be the best part of the video today. Because it's just me wiring, so there you star bud. Hey. Your shining star up in the sky, look. No? Oh, fair enough. Man of very few words. A little bit more in now, so we figured out that these two switches here are going to switch the relay side. 12 volt supply for these, so if we turn that off, we isolate the solid state relay, no power to elements. And then also, before we feed the power into here, this also has to go via a relay, and that relay will be powered by a float switch, a level, float level switch in the tank. So when the tank's full of water, it energizes, closes the contacts, which will allow current to flow through here. Then we'll control it with these switches, the red ones, and when we turn that on, we have power to the elements. But as it stands now, I'm going to have to get in the car, go and get changed, fetch the kids and then come back if I can palm them off on somebody. Luckily for me, the old queen was in town, so uh, she nipped to the brewery and picked the kids up. She's taken her back to her house. It's half past five, Gemma's going to be here any minute, but I'm going to stay behind a little bit just to get this up and running. So we've got most of the wiring done on the inside just for powering the electrics. If you'd like to have a bit of a shot there, you'll see what we've got. The PIDs, the switches for the alarms along the top, the switches for the 12 volt controls for the solid state relays along the bottom. We've got an odd PID there. This one I harvested off an old machine. It's actually a West 6100. Now, I managed to find the uh, user manual for it and it runs on believe it or not 30 volts so I've actually got this 30 volt AC power supply 
which used to run a printer, believe it or not. So I've just jerry-rigged that up and that powers that no problem. The others run off a 240AC. Then uh, I've wired the alarm up as well. We've got the timer alarm on here to set for 10 seconds. So if I turn the key, you'll see we're illuminated and immediately the timer starts to count down. Now these alarms aren't wired up, but this one is which means that once your mash is complete your alarm will sound all we have to do is come and press the reset button and it starts the countdown over again so I'm pretty chuffed with that if I'm honest it's amazing what a couple of hours can do isn't it so we've got a panel on the wall check this out come on she looks neat so couple of things I'm not keen on but I will live with for now so let me back up so the power cable coming in we've got a separate feed for each element we've got three elements there now I like the idea of having isolators and sockets so I can disconnect this bad boy if I do any work inside I can isolate and I can disconnect and I can isolate over at the consumer unit on the wall so we've got several points of isolation to prevent electrocution we've got MCBs and RCDs over there in the consumer unit and then on this side we've obviously got all of the relays in place the solid states up the top which can only be activated via these relays here the only problem is should they fail closed circuit then your elements would still be live but even if they fail closed circuit we're going to come out the bottom onto these leads as well and that's why we're going to plug in the trailing cable for the element so if we disconnect there another source of isolation it's quite neat in there and tidy isn't it considering uh, what it looked like before I've got lots of room left I've got another din rail here to put some more relays on so yeah as I was saying what I'm probably thinking about doing when I've got some spare cash and I don't have any spare cash I'm not kidding then what I will do is uh, change all these boxes out and all the sockets and all the plugs for something standard everything will be the same but at the minute I'm literally just using what I've got knocking about to get us off the ground otherwise we'll have a long wait on our hands and we've actually got a couple of other projects as well in the pipeline that mean I need to get this finished and operational so I can move on to the second project which you guys should we pull it off will absolutely freaking love anyway that's something we'll talk about another day so how I'm going to power this unit is probably just plug it in. I'm going to drop a trailing lead out, just a socket, and we'll plug it in here. So this uses no electricity whatsoever. Maybe half an amp to power all of it. The 12 volts, the relays, they're not using anything. It's just all switch gear. So the trade-off for taking this socket here is we'll have two sockets on the side which I mounted when I originally built this thing and the heat sinks are on the outside as well so that should help us in terms of uh, getting over temp in there and then also in the future I wire up the alarms so as it stands at the minute that's doing nothing that light that light and that switch is doing nothing this switch is doing nothing so these are all things that we can incorporate the timer still works so we can set this up via the HLT to come on at midnight and then we can come in obviously and, and brew but I think I've probably waffled on enough there now for the day it's getting late I'm tripping over stuff it looks neat I'm pleased that it's up on the wall I didn't think I'd ever use it really again in a in a commercial environment I was just going to take it for home brew but Sailor V, such is life. The homebrew kit will have to wait. This is definitely more important 
but I like it. She looks good on the wall there. She fits in. She fits in nicely. So Gemma's on her way down in the car. She took it with the kids just to give me a couple more hours to get this finished. And once I'm in there, I'll be off home. Shower, pint, vlog, bed, rinse, repeat. We'll see you tomorrow.